Hello, Flame community. This is Jeff Kyle with the Flame Learning Channel. If grain is something you work with in batch on a daily basis, then get ready for what may be the biggest news you've heard in a long time. Flame 2025 introduces a brand new grain workflow that combines a number of industry standard techniques that allow you to regrain your work with incredible control, flexibility, and speed. In this video, we'll be covering the basics of the new Match Grain node, going over its various inputs, settings, outputs, and discussing how to use it. Here we are in Batch, and to start, I'll pull out the new Match Grain node. Taking a look, we can see it has five inputs. The first input is Front, which gets connected to what we're looking to regrain. The second input is degrained clip, which should match the original clip just after it's been degrained. The third input is original clip. The fourth input is a matte input, but it's important to note that this is a special matte input not used for a composite, but used to limit the region used in dispersion, which we'll cover in the next video. And the fifth and final input is a grain input, which is meant to be connected to the normalized grain output from another match grain node, typically rendered out as a separate clip. And as an important note, all of the clips connected to the first three inputs must have the same color space, and resolution of course, for the analysis to work. I'll connect the front input to the result of my composite, the degrained clip to my degrained clip, and the original clip to my original clip. Taking a look at the controls, we have an analysis button here on the left to start the analysis, and beneath that, a few controls for controlling that analysis. This samples field controls the number of slices that the luminosity is being split into. The from and to fields control the analysis range, and it's important to note that if the clip in question does not have a very significant luminance shift, then the number of frames needed to analyze is rather small. One or two frames would probably do the trick. But for clips with a significant luminance shift, the more frames included, the better, and the more accurate the analysis will be. And finally, the step field controls the frame interval between the first and last frame. In my case, I can see that my clip doesn't have a whole lot of luminance variation, so I'll just leave the settings at their default state and hit Analyze. The Grain Analysis Progress screen comes up, and I can see the grain is being analyzed, and after just a few seconds, we have our result. The graph in the center here displays a histogram of the original clip, as well as red, green, and blue curves that define the grain intensity based on the luminance of the clip, split into the number of samples we chose just before analyzing. The points can be selected, modified, and framed, and the graph can be zoomed in and out using the Control Spacebar click and drag shortcut, as well as the Spacebar shortcut to pan around the viewer. The Match Grain node has two outputs, which we can view with the F4 keyboard shortcut, the first of which being the result of the analysis performed, and the second is a grain output controlled by the grain output selection here on the right. I'll hit F4 again to switch to the grain output, and the first option in the dropdown here is the extracted grain, which if you're familiar with typical grain workflows, is the result of the denoise plate subtracted from the original plate. And it looks like nothing at first, but if I gamma up here with Shift W, we can see that the grain is there, it's just very dark. The second option is the default, and it's the normalized grain, which is the extracted grain adjusted to be independent of luminance. And the final option is matched grain, which is the extracted grain adapted to the front input. Under a simple shot scenario like we have here, once we finished analyzing, there really isn't much else to it. That result has the grain adapted to the composite, and we're ready to render. It's as easy as that. If we want to use our analyzed grain from this shot and apply it to another shot, maybe a scenario where we have another take of this shot, that's where the normalized grain output comes into play. Firstly, we'll want to render out our grain pass so we don't have to take our clip with us wherever we go. So in my case, I'm using a render node here and just rendering it out so I can bring it wherever I want. Now that that's done, I'll take my render from the media panel over here and bring it into my batch schematic. 
Next, we need to take both the match grain node and the grain pass and bring it into another batch. We can copy and paste it, but in my case, I'm going to use the bin. So I'll select both of these and just pull them down into my project bin here. Now I can head over to the next shot and just pull out the node and grain pass that I just saved. It's important to note that for this to work, this match grain node needs to be a copy of the original match grain node used in the analysis because the analyzed curves data needs to match the normalized grain clip. Now that we have everything we need, we would just connect the normalized grain into the grain input of this match grain node, and then connect the front to the composite for the new shot. Just to recap, we're using the same grain we analyzed from the original shot here on the second shot with the normalized grain pass and the match grain node. With this workflow, we can take our save setup and apply it to as many similar shots as we have with little to no downtime. In the next video, we'll dig a little deeper into the match grain node and go over some of the more advanced options. But for now, if you like these videos and you're finding them helpful, please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click that bell to stay notified about new content. Please feel free to comment any questions or suggestions below. And until next time, thanks a bunch for watching.